Happy Friday. It's been quite a week. I say that a lot because it happens a lot. So today's video, hmm, it's a little controversial, nothing bad. I mean, this is nothing, I think it's wonderful, but it's, it, people are going to be talking. I don't care because it's true. So I start, you know, most of you know, I have a student in the UK and she's an equine therapist. Um, she works with horses, uh, a lot of equestrian horses, um, just all different kinds of horses. Some are just regular. She also works with some of the, the, like the minis and the dwarfs that are rescued that are just the cutest little things you ever saw. Anyway, she came to me six months ago and wanted to work with me so that I would teach her Reiki because I've been doing it my entire life. I've been a Reiki master, that's the highest degree you can go, since I was 18. I'm 63. I've been doing this a while. My, and I, I'm not saying this from an ego standpoint, it's just part of the story. So my abilities are known, recognized, um, held in high esteem all over the world. I treat on a regular basis the animals and the, as well as the people. Some are professors at major medical universities. Some are very famous artists and you would say, really? Yeah, and I'm not saying who. We do have HIPAA. Just some of the coolest people and the coolest animals you could ever, ever, ever hope to meet. And she, my student is doing brilliant. I'm very, very proud of her. So she's learning animal Reiki. And so she she asked me one day, because she'll get a new a new animal and I will be able to tap into the animal's energy and see what's going on with the animal. She's in the UK, I'm in Arizona, and I can tap into that animal's energy and tell you exactly, precisely, what is wrong, where it hurts, how long it happened. Usually I can tell you how the injury happened. And she will check with the owner and doggone it, you're right, and then she can treat it and everything's fine. She said, how can I do this? Well, let's find out, let's get started. And she is, is a, was raised on a farm. So she sees animals a little bit differently than I do. Because for me, every animal is a fur baby. I don't care what that animal is. I would have my own sanctuary of every possible rescue animal on the face of this earth. I would have house cows if I could. I won't, but I would if I could. I love animals. And so she's opening herself up to communications. And people say animals are dumb animals. Really? No, they're not. People say, well, they can't tell you where it hurts. Honey, they can. You just don't listen. It's that simple. Close your mouth. Open your mind. Open your heart. And you can see a lot that you just, you don't want to see. I do it every day. I am extremely intuitive. I am a psychic medium. It's, it's who I am. It's how I was born. Okay, it, it's me. You know, I'm, it's just who I am. So with an animal, I get a call. And every day I treat horses, every day. A few here in the States, primarily most of my horses are in the UK. And they're just amazing, beautiful animals. Uh, one, and I get a little teary, um, this beautiful horse, about five years old, was an equestrian. I mean, worth some money. He was, I want to say five when he was injured. A five-year-old horse, that's too young to be ridden. Please wait until a horse is six before you start riding. Their bones, 
aren't mature enough to hold the weight of a rider in a saddle? Like I said, this is controversial, but I'm telling you. This horse took a fall, and he tore the spinous ligaments throughout his neck and his upper back. Horrific injury, and they continued to ride him. Animals have a huge, a very, very high pain threshold. And unless they're in excruciating pain, they're not going to let you know. Horses, cows, sheep, goats, animals that would be prey animals, they can't let their guard down. They can't show pain because then they're somebody's dinner. That's how their mind works. So they're going to suck it up and they're going to work through it. He was showing signs and symptoms of pain. They didn't want to see it. Their eye was literally on the prize. Their eye was on the next championship at his expense. And then it just got to be a huge issue. He had several surgeries, very medicated. Um, this is where I, it, it's very difficult for me because when I tap into an animal's energy, just like if I tap into your energy, if you're my client, I can pick up what you're feeling. I can pick up your pain, your anxiety. I can pick up your worries, your traumas, your triggers, and that applies to the animal. And with his beautiful horse, he had surgeries, he had horrific pain, and a lot of us get a little grumpy when we're in pain, severe pain, spinal pain. Anybody that sees us that is an orthopedic surgeon, neurosurgeon, it hurts. It hurts. And things in the UK are not treated as they are here. That's huge. But this horse was mistreated. He was deemed dangerous. He was in pain. He wasn't dangerous. He was trying to tell them, I'm in pain, I need help, and they wouldn't listen. They didn't want to hear it. He, was a, he wasn't any good to anybody anymore. We're done with him. So a new owner, sorry, my hair is tickling my eye. A new owner stepped in, thank God, pulled him out of that stable, out of that life. And eventually the stable that he was in Someone at that stable got in touch with my student and said, this isn't good. I mean, they're talking possibly putting him down. And that was just heartbreaking because people, especially with large animals, if they see them being aggressive, there's an animal that is aggressive is generally in fear or in pain or both. Find out why. Don't get mad and punch the animal. That just, it, I do not tolerate abuse of children, abuse of people, or any abuse of any animal, ever. There's no excuse. Luckily, the owner agreed and moved the horse in with my student's horse. And I agreed to start treating the horse. And I am a very aggressive, holistic, healer. And people will say, the next thing I'm going to say is just total BS. And it's not. If you treat with me, you know it's true. So for an intense case like this, a serious case, that this beautiful horse may be put down, I was raking that horse every two hours. That means throughout the night, every two hours, I, I treat this horse. I don't care if you believe me or not. It's a true story. And in it was just a few days, within a week. I want to say three days because I have photos. He's running in the field. He's feeling good. He has no pressure. He doesn't have a job. He doesn't have demands. He doesn't have somebody hitting him, beating him, tasing him. You know, they use the little shock, cattle prod kind of thing. No. And I told him when they moved him over, I told my student, let him know, no pain meds, none. They were giving him, in the UK, it's called pencetamol. This is the equivalent of Tylenol. No, because let's give his, you know, poor little liver a rest. Let's just, he's eating, you know, hay. He's eating grass. He has plenty of water. Let's just let him be a horse and let me treat him and just decompress. 
and the change just within days was just, oh my God, it was just astounding. I have photos of him running in the field. They didn't think he would ever do that again. Now he can he, he can be a stinker. He has been known a couple of times when the farrier was out. He was feeling really frisky and feeling good. He feels so much better. He is in no pain. He has no scar tissue, no adhesions. He's a happy boy. He can roll. He can buck. And he kind of sauntered over to my student one day. And like I said, the farrier was out, the nail trimmer. And everybody was getting their mani patties. And he had his. And he kind of walked over to her and looked at her. I walked over and jumped a four-foot fence and kind of trotted around and jumped it again. Walked over to her like, see what I can do. He was so proud of himself. He could jump and it didn't hurt. Now he knows we don't do that. I'm glad you don't hurt. This is good, but you could hurt yourself. But animals can tell you if you listen. One of the first things I did with this horse was talk to him. Tell me what happened. Where does it hurt? How does it hurt? What makes it hurt? He was astounded to know that somebody could understand him. What really got him was that somebody cared. I would say 95% of my animal clients, the animal is shocked that somebody asks them, are you okay? What's wrong? How can I help? Tell me where it hurts. Horses, dogs will do this, and they will do this. Ask them a question, a simple question, don't get complex. A simple question and watch their response and tell them answer yes or no. And he will answer yes or no. Her horse will answer yes or no. Or they may ignore you because he's at the age of a teenager, so that's what teenagers do. But this works, it consistently works. If you have an animal who is in pain, ask the animal, what happened? Where does it hurt? Be gentle, be tender. Find out what happened, where it hurts. Don't be aggressive. Don't blame the animal. Well, you shouldn't have been in the street. You wouldn't have been hit by the car. Yeah, well, what if somebody said that to you? If you got hit by a car, and you're laying there with a broken hip and somebody standing looking at you telling you, well, you shouldn't have done it. You think? I mean, they're not stupid. They know they made a mistake. Don't rub their nose in it. I love what I do. I love treating people and I love treating animals. I, I have a, a dog client that I have been treating, oh gosh, for a year, she was a rescue from Mexico, my best friend's dog, and she had a lot of anxiety. She had been abused, and then when they brought her to the States, she went to some college students who had no business having a dog, and she was abused and ignored and neglected, and finally she ended up with my best friend and his girlfriend, and it took some work, and I mean, this dog was on Prozac. It was so messed up. And I said, it's going to be okay. Just let me do what I do. And I've been raking Rosie the dog. Oh, gosh, a year. And she's totally off her meds. She is the happiest little girl. But, and I have taught my friend to ask her, what's wrong? How does it hurt? Why does it hurt? Talk to me. It makes a difference. It truly makes a difference. Animals are natural empaths. They can sense when you're upset. They know when you're happy, they know when you're sad, they know when you're angry. They will try to make it better. They feel what you're feeling, that's what an empath does, and they wanna make it better. You might be in the worst mood and a dog will come up to you. They wanna make it better. And that's why I get so mad. They some A dog or a cat or something will see you're upset and somebody will kick it. Seriously, they're trying to help. Get over yourself. Animals, it's, it's unconditional love if you give them a chance. That's all they want to do is give love and make it better. We owe the same to them. 
Like I said, this is controversial. That's okay. You either believe it or you don't. Really don't care one way or the other. And one little side note. So my student has two boys. One is, oh, he's going to get mad. He just had a birthday. He's 11 and the other one just turned 13. And I really hope I'm right. Otherwise, I'm going to get a phone call about this one. And so the older one, I told him one day, because he, you know, kind of minimal interest in horses. He was actually afraid of horses. And I said, I need you to do me a favor since I'm not there. I need you to stay, always stay on this side of the fence, but go out when your mom goes out with the horses. I just need you to toss him carrots and parsnips and just talk to him. Tell him about your day, ask him about his day, ask him how he's feeling, if he's in any pain, if his back's feeling better. Yes, no questions. And he said, okay. And so he goes out, they come home and I get a phone call. And he said his, his back's better, except when he rolls sometimes on the left, it hurts. And I said, really? And his mom's standing there and her eyes are big because we'd never told him what side the injury was on. There's no way he could have known it was the left side. This works. Now, and he, he goes out to the horse every chance that he gets. And I have hired him as my little assistant. He doesn't get paid much, but he does get paid because he will go out and assess the animal for me and ask specific questions that I need answers to. And he gives me, you know, the answers that I need. Not always what I want to hear, but the answers that I need. And then I can go back and check in with the horse to verify everything. And animal communication is very real. It's very, very real if you give it a chance. If you, you know, people say Reiki is a bunch of nonsense. It's just hoodoo voodoo. Honey, it's not. It's been around. Native Americans used Reiki. That's all they had. Reiki and herbs. This has been around since the beginning of time. Egyptians used it. You know, there's all kinds of Reiki and that's okay. So, Open your mind to the possibilities. If you want to talk to me about it, it's fine. Uh, I'm not taking on any, any more students. Because it's going to be years that I work with my student and her son. I wouldn't trade them for anything. They are just brilliant. I adore them. And hopefully, at some point in the near future, I will be going to the UK to see my horses in person and visit. I have a lot of clientele in the UK. I had a new client. Actually, there's an eight-hour time difference. And my latest client I met with at 1 o'clock in the morning, my time. It was 9 a.m. her time. So I put in some weird hours, but I love what I do. And when I, the feedback I get is the pain is gone. I mean, and it's, it, it, if it's a migraine, if it's chronic pain, it's gone, gone. If it's something that you know, you're going to be struggling with. It may be gone for 10 days and we got to hit it again. But it, it makes a difference. My point being, open your mind. And never hesitate to look into alternative medicine. It's not, there's a difference between alternative medicine, holistic medicine, Ayurvedic medicine. I do not deal in any herbs or home remedies or herbal concoctions at all. I don't do that. Uh, I don't even know of anybody. Well, I do. I know of somebody in the UK. I have a, a good friend, Emma, in the UK that does some Ayurvedic medicine. Uh, but nobody here in the States. But don't be afraid of learning something. Research it. Find out. It is not, a, you know, a sin in the eyes of God because they were healed, you know, People who have been healing, laying on of hands, that's all this is. I have been blessed with a gift. I have hundreds and hundreds of patients that, you know, don't hesitate to call me. The youngest patient I have treated thus far was seven weeks old. He had infantile, um, infantile GERD reflux, was going to have to have surgery, and I treated him, and he never had to have surgery, thank God. He's three years old now. Cutest little guy. Oh, my word, he's cute. 
and the oldest, I'm thinking, was in their 80s. And that was just end of life care. They didn't want to be in pain. And so we did Reiki and guided meditation to help them relax. Their family was with them and they had a beautiful crossing. And that's all you can ask for. So, like I said, it is controversial. You may unfriend me now. You may think I'm a banana cake. I don't care. It's true. It's who I am.